mean, I think telemedicine medicine has provided a tremendous opportunity for us to take care of patients in general and pain patients in uh, particular uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we obviously wanted to minimize exposure of patients to COVID during the pandemic. So, but patients who have MPN as well as other hematological malignancies needed to have uh, CBCs frequently to make sure that the treatments that they were on uh, were safe, uh, that they were doing what they were uh, supposed to do in terms of controlling their counts. So there was no escaping that, uh, but and they also needed to uh, get a hold of their doctor. So being able to do both perhaps uh, away from the hospital in some type of uh, a clinic and being able to connect with the physician uh, online uh, to discuss the results of the CPC that they had obtained in perhaps a less populated lab was tremendous. Um, so um, and granted, this had uh, made it feasible to care for patients during the pandemic, but now that uh, we are sort of emerging from the pandemic, people are realizing that perhaps those technologies are there to stay and that perhaps there's a subset of patient that may still be able to benefit and take advantage from those resources. So uh, we are learning as we go who may be able to, to continue to do this. Um, I have to say though, that that may not be for every patient. And I still feel like uh, there's a particular type of MPN patient that will benefit from seeing the physician uh, and having a, a full exam uh, once every so often. Uh, and we can talk about the particular type of patient that that may be. Uh, but granted, telemedicine has certainly provided a tremendous advantage during COVID. So when I think of the patient that might benefit most from seeing their physician via a televisit, for example, it would be someone who... Uh, perhaps has a stable disease, someone who I may want to monitor perhaps every three to six months, someone who may have stable counts, uh, and we're just talking about their symptoms and monitoring those types of things every so often. Um, and perhaps I look at the labs and we can discuss their symptoms and, and whether or not they have uh, spinomegaly and issues like that. Um, someone who may already be on a stable dose of medication and we don't have to do any dose. And even if we had to do those adjustments, perhaps we could do labs a little more frequently. So that would be all right too. But someone in whom I would like to initiate a new treatment, someone in whom um, their, their disease may be progressing a little too quickly, uh, someone who may I want to do an exam and assess their spleen. Uh, I, I suppose you could send them to uh, an ultrasound facility and obtain an MRI or a CT or an ultrasound of their imaging study that is of their spleen. But there's nothing like an actual exam of a patient in whom you are thinking about the disease progression. So those sorts of patients in which the disease is actually changing its pace, and you may want to take a look at the peripheral smear, uh, look and examine the skin for certain TKI and signs and symptoms of low platelets and that sort of thing. Look, look at the mouth for all ulcers and uh, things of that nature. So, I mean, you know, those are the patients that I feel like could benefit the most from seeing their physician. And of course, the patient who has uh, questions and um, that that could be uh, probably beyond what a televisit could do um, I think those would be the types of situations where you would like to have a physical presence and, and discuss things that would be uh, of extreme importance to the patient's uh, physical health, psychological health, and, and of course, labs uh, that you may want to obtain beyond the regular CBC that a standard lab uh, could obtain outside of your institution. There are specialized labs that not every lab outside of your own a tertiary care center may be able to provide. And that is something that we run into all the time. Let's say a patient may require a bone marrow biopsy. Well, then you have to have them physically be in your uh, place. And then you might as well then see them, examine them and do all of the labs. And that's the other thing that we would like to do is perhaps to uh, bundle all of the tests so that you would be minimizing the exposure of patients to frequent visits so that you would be again, lessening the exposure to potential infections.